If you're new to blueprint editing and enter the blueprint file, you will see all this crazy nonsense. You might wonder why is there two X's and Y's? Or what does this even do or mean? Well in this video we will break it all down going through every parts line of code and explaining what it does and what happens if you change the value of it. At the end of the video, I will show you some cool tricks from what I learned and you non-DLC players can do too. First, we will go over the things that will always be in your blueprint file. The center, parts, stages, rotation, offset, and interior view. The center is basically the center of your blueprint area, the dark blue line, currently it's placed at X, 7. So let's change it to X, 10 and see what happens. But wait, first we got to go over something, you must be careful when changing the file of your blueprint. Simply deleting and not adding a comma or a quotation mark will cause your blueprint to not load. So make sure you add that comma or quotation mark back in. Now we can load up the blueprint. You will notice that the rocket shifted 3 units to the left. Well this center dark blue line is X, 10 now, not X, 7, but that's basically all for the center. Let's go over the parts real quick, the parts contains every single part of your build. Let's look at this fuel tank, we can break it down to the name, position, orientation, temperature, attributes, and texture. Parts like the engine and wheel have a boolean category where you can only change the variables inside to true or false. But every part has its own name position and orientation. We will get back to these parts and let's move down to the bottom of the file where you will find the stages, rotation, offset and interior view. The stages are your stages of your rocket. The stage 1D tells you the stages in order, so first, second and third. Your part indexes is the part that will be stage, you can find it by going to your first part in the file, starting from zero and counting down. Let's find what this part is, the part index is 5. So let's go to the start and counting from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's a parachute, just like as it is in the game, that's basically it for stages, let's go over the rotation, putting a value in the rotation variable will rotate your entire blueprint area in degrees counterclockwise. You can see it once we load it in the game, every part you put in the grid will automatically rotate to that degree. But saving and importing it from a different blueprint will automatically set it back to 0. Now to the offset, increasing the X will move the entire rocket to the right and increasing the Y will move the entire rocket up. Decreasing and going into negative values move the rocket left and down. Can be very useful for moving rockets with high part count so it won't crash your game or those who don't have infinite build area, can use it to get more space to build with. Finally interior view, it's just the interior view in the game where you can change it here so it's useless. Now let's go over every part that has their own unique attributes. Let's check out the capsule though and see what we can mess with, you can see it has a X and Y coordinate of the capsule. You can change it to any specific value you want and it will move accordingly. Over to the orientation category, it also has an X and Y but changing them stretches your capsule into a wider or taller one. Here's a Z variable, putting any value will rotate your part in degrees. Unlike the rotation variable we went over earlier, importing and keep its rotation. Here at the temperature, the capsule somehow has two of these but putting a value inside will set the capsule to that temperature at launch. So basically, negative infinity, is just 0 Celsius. Now we can move on to the fuel tanks, here we have the width original, increasing it will not stretch it, it will actually widen it giving it more fuel and mass. Same thing goes with the height. Next we have width A and B, width A is the width of the bottom of your tank, and width B is the width of the top of your tank. Changing the values inside won't do anything when the tank is by itself but when you have a tank on the top and bottom and change the width A and B, it will actually change the width adaptation of your tanks, but moving the tank will reset the tank back to the original widths of the tanks. Now if you want to have more fuel and mass but don't want to change your width and height, you can use the fuel percent to a higher number and it will increase the amount of fuel and mass inside of that tank. But you can't increase any more fuel into the tank if you do so. To the texture category there's really not a lot that I know due to the fact I am a non-DLC player so I don't have access to textures but what I know is you can type these words into quotation marks and it will give you that texture, there's even hidden ones where you can't access them inside the game. 
Now to the fairings, you have your regular width original, A, B, and height. You have a force percentage now instead of fuel percentage. Increasing it will give more power and force when separated. The fairings have an entire boolean category so let's go over that. If you remember earlier that width A was the bottom of our tank, it goes accordingly to the occupied A. There's no fairing or fuel tank under the fairing so the bottom isn't occupied so it stays false. But when there is a fairing or fuel tank attached to the bottom, it is now occupied so it will change to true. These two you can change inside the game but quickly going over, detach edges will split open your fairings if it is true, but setting it to off it won't split them open. Adapt to tank will cause your fairings to adapt to a fuel tank if true but won't if false. Now moving on to the texture category, there's an added variable named fragment. You can set it to left and right and loading in you will only get the left or right fragment of the fairing. Let's move on to the separators, with the side separators you have a fragment variable like the fairing before, you can set it to left or right and you will have that fragment of the separator. To the stage separator, you have your width and width B, unlike the others it only has a width B because the top of it gets adapted to different parts with different widths, but the bottom which would be width A, doesn't adapt to different widths so there's no width A. Now you got the height which measures the height of your separator when it adapts to something. The max height is how far your separator can adapt to something but increasing it allows your separator to attach to parts that are further away than a normal separator where it can only reach 4 meters away. Both of these separators have a force percentage like the fairings where increasing it will add more force. Now finally let's talk about the engines. We will look at the Hawk engine, the other engines have the same variables as the Hawk. Stretching the engine with the X and Ys will increase its power and fuel consumption. Engine on and gimbal on are self-explanatory and can be toggled in the game. This variable is named heat on for creative use, setting it to false will stop the engine from heating up parts around it so now you can clip engines for power. Now before we get to the cool tricks, let's go over the other variables we didn't go over that's worth mentioning. The size variables in the nose cones and fuselages will both affect its width and height. But the size variable founded in the struts will only affect the length. Now you will find these variables like animation state, states, and state target which are found by parts with animated and moving things like parachutes and solar panels. You can only put in values from 0 to 1. Changing the value inside the parachute will lock the animated parachute in place and you won't be able to activate it again. If you change the value inside the solar panels you will get the solar panel partially extended. If you want to lock it in place, change the state target, not the state. But once you retract and extend it will go back to its regular form. Now we can move on to the cool tricks that I've learned that you can do too in blueprint editing. Starting first you can get bigger width fuel tanks beyond the 3 width original limit in non-DLC kind of. You can put any negative value in the width like a fuel tank and just like that you have a bigger fuel tank with the extra fuel and mass, the only downside is that the shadow is inverted. This trick also works if you put a negative value for the height and the shadow won't be inverted this time. Though some parts when they are in negative height and width actually have negative mass. Next, you can change the forces of a docking port to repel away from another docking port, and you can make a simple Akari drive like this one made by Dark Matter. Now you can fly without wasting fuel. How cool is that? Now with aerodynamic fuselages you can set the size to this microscopic number and stretch out more you will have a rectangular fuselage but what's special is that it has no hitbox once you launch it. Next with this one you can go to any part and change the negative infinity in the temperature variable to NAND, and you will have that part be heat resistant without needing a heat shield. Now let's see how you can make these color fuel tanks. With this one you can set the width of a heat shield and stretch it out with the X and Ys you will get this orange fuel tank which you can use for builds like a space shuttle or SLS. This sliver tank can be done with a bunch of probes slightly moved down from each other and keep shrinking the width you will be able to get this silver effect. And for this gray tank you can shrink the width of a docking port and stretch it out and there we have our gray tank. Lastly you can get this black fuel tank or any part black by using burn marks which you can check out how in this video right here.